How about that cigar? How about that cigar? <laughs> that is not exactly what we talked about, but that's okay. That's all right. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> Guys, welcome to How About That Cigar Live, episode 121 on this beautiful Monday evening. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world. Let us know, as always, what you are smoking and drinking along with us in the comments. Thank you so much, as always, for joining us live from the Drew Estate Cigar Studios. And let's mention these beautiful Drew Estate Toro collections. The Drew, uh, Drew Estate is releasing a six cigar traditional sampler box containing Herrera Esteli Habano, Undercrown Maduro, and Undercrown Shade. Each box contains a total of six cigars, two Herrera Esteli Habano 6x50, two Undercrown Maduro 6x50, and two Undercrown Shade 6x50. The six cigar traditional sampler pataka comes to retailers packaged in five count sleeves. All the cigars contained within the traditional sampler are made exclusively using dark air cured tobaccos. Each individual traditional sampler has an MSRP of 50, $53.58. This six cigar traditional sampler and all of Drew Estate's Bonanza Takeover releases can be found at drewestate.com slash DE Bonanza Takeover. So, Guys, thanks again for joining us on episode 121. I, I can't believe it's 120. Every time the number goes up, we're just astonished. So, and that's all because of you guys watching and listening. We're grateful for you. Uh, thanks. We've already got some good people in the comments saying hello. So, yeah, say hi to us. Let us know what you're smoking and drinking. And uh, we're excited to have you guys, as always, on with us. We have uh, a great returning special guest this evening for their second appearance. Um. I don't really want to talk about it, but we will talk about what we talk about at the beginning of every show, which is our sports teams. Um, I don't think we have one right now. We don't have one right now? Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Well, the Minnesota Twins are... Twins. They're, they're not the worst team in baseball. Um, right now. Right now, they're the sixth worst team in baseball. Um, yeah, we're six from the bottom in all of major leagues so it is what it is they're just uh i which, think last i checked they were getting beat seven to nothing by the white Sox. uh which is actually impressive so, considering that they gave up one of our best players they traded away they traded away uh our yeah nelly cruz and he's he's at uh seattle correct mm -hmm. yeah he's at seattle which it's interesting because sometimes you have interleague play where you get to play against teams from different leagues and we're not gonna it would have been kind of weird and cool to you know, if we faced them later right. in the season, that's not going to happen. But, um, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, the uh, the Twins beat the teams we're really not supposed to beat, and we lose to the teams we're really not supposed to, or what? You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah, but you know, Doc. Yeah. So, did you see the doctor? He he understood what what was happening. Oh yeah. Yeah, Garrett was it. coming from the downstairs humidor. That's exactly what totally was happening. What was I happening. couldn't see it, you know, because I, you know, yeah. it's all happening behind me. I couldn't see it. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, but I so I've started looking at the NFL schedule already because <laughs> yeah, I know you know too. because I'm excited for NFL football to start again. Um, are you doing fantasy this year? I am. Yeah, okay. just one league. I'm I'm done with I'm I'm done with the the multi leagues. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just I don't have time for it. Um, I barely have time for one league and it's just some, some of our neighbors here on the street. Oh, we that's just, cool. we just have a neighborhood fantasy league. That's cool. And, uh, it's simple. It's, it's, it's easy. And, and I really don't, I don't put the time into it. Like I did in, back in the day. I mean, when I was in like six leagues, seriously, I don't know about you guys, but man, I would spend probably a couple hours a day just looking at fantasy stuff and it was just out well, of control i mean do you remember in the mid to early 90s playing fantasy football i didn't start in, yeah mid 90s i think the first year i played fan that i was on a fantasy football league was 97 okay not 97 98 season uh so yeah we're talking telephones just calling people and saying here's my lineup newspaper New, newspapers the magazines that you can still for some weird reason you can still buy those printed magazines yeah, i know i don't know why you would want to buy one of those but you can if you want to 
Uh, but yeah, it was just too much. So, yeah. um, so yeah, Garrett, uh, Garrett was down in the, he was in the downstairs humidor. Yeah. 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 It's right. Down grabbing, there. grabbing some cigars for us. So, um, thank you guys for being on with us for episode 121 and let's bring on our special guest of the evening. And as always guys, you know, that special guests of how about that cigar live are brought to you by Corona cigar company and Corona cigar.com, the internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store. Corona cigar company offers you the finest handmade cigars, humidors and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price. You'll also find unique and limited cigars containing Florida sun grown tobacco as a proud American, President and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Jeff Borshowitz, believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. At Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special Florida sun-grown tobacco. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona Cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info on all of that, please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please put your hands together and welcome to episode 121 of How About That Cigar Live for his second appearance from Hoya de Nicaragua, Juan Martinez. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you very much, guys. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me, my dog, and my bugs around the garden <laughs> here. Uh, who are going to be pitching in some some controversial opinions during the evening. Thank you for having me, guys. Absolutely, it's great to see you. You as well. And and for those watching and listening, there's a bug called a cicada. Yeah. And we don't know why God created the cicada. <laughs> We gonna, really don't. I'm going to ask him someday. I am. I am too. Uh, but the cicada has been responsible for many annoyances. And yeah. uh, tonight may be one of those. We'll be serenaded with this with the song of of, yeah. of cicadas in the background. Actually, right now, they're quiet. So they're right. It's actually when I put myself on mute, they go off. So they're going to start in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> it's actually a good question that you pose. What's the purpose of that dreaded animal yeah. there? Yeah, there's a handful of animals. Uh, the flea. Uh, mosquitoes? Mosquito- mosquitoes. No, mosquitoes, yeah. I know what their mission is. Their mission is to be the most annoying thing in the world and kill people <laughs> and kill a lot of people. Man. They do kill a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. They, they, they are, they're a messy, you know, cicadas, they're noisy, but they don't harm. Mosquitoes, those guys are, you know, we, we, da- we have down here a sort of a Chinese in, in, uh, invention, which is like a racket with uh, electrical current. I don't know if you've seen yes. it. I think it's illegal yeah. anywhere oh. in the world. But, oh, you have one of those? Oh, there you go. Oh, right you here. have one of those, man. <laughs> I can't believe that. I thought that yeah. was like sort of special to our country or something, man. But that's awesome. Oh, no. That's, no, that's my was... favorite. That's my favorite companion uh, every day. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I keep this always right at hand because uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's you know, there's there's flies that get in here in the studio because there's a farm just very close by and there's horses and cows. And they they, of course, they there's a lot of flies coming over to our neighborhood from the farm. So we're we're used to it. Yeah. So um, so Juan, tell us, first of all, what did you uh, what did you decide to fire up first to smoke along with us here on the show? So actually, I started earlier than you guys. So I fire up at numero uno. Oh, yeah. which I haven't smoked recently. And, and, and to be completely honest, I, I told you guys, my last appearance was canceled because I got I got COVID uh, last month. And the worst part of getting COVID, other than, you know, getting sick and all that and getting worried for everybody else, is the loss of, of uh, taste and smell. That yes. is something. So I, 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 it has taken me a while to get my, get my, my taste and my smell back. So you can imagine that smoking cigars is, 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 is it's not the same, obviously. So I've right. been slowly getting it back. So right now, this is actually my first numero uno. They the light, light up for about a month and a half. So yeah. really, really doing it. Yeah, it, it is. It is tough. We we've yeah. talked about it. That man losing that losing the sense of of taste and smell. It's uh, it's almost like uh, um, it, it's almost like uh 
going blind for for a short period of time where it, because that's for for us as cigar smokers that's that's something that we we rely on it's a sense that uh, you know some people think taste and smell no big deal but we really rely on that so yeah that's tricky yeah and no, I was, and, and, and so go ahead go ahead one no, that I, they, those were senses that, you know, you, you think about your, your vision, your hearing, your touch. Those are senses that you generally don't put a lot of, if, if you're not, if you're not in this trade and you're not, you know, in tasting and, 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 and the experiential part, you don't apply a lot of relevance to those. But when you lose them, man, life is not the same. Food is not the same. Drink is not the same. Coffee is not the same. Wine is not the same, you know, and... I know some people because you have to go through therapy to, to get it back. So my doctor told me that it could take from a few weeks to up to six months to get it back. And I was like, no way, man. Yeah. Six yeah. months without taste. So I actually started, my wife is very much into a lot of uh, Montessori uh, education and all that. So she had yeah. bought a kit for my kids for smell training, which is basically like a, a small capsules of different smells that yeah. you have to identify with a card. And I have actually spent a month doing it twice in the morning, in the evening to try to get it back, you know, smelling. And, and the beautiful thing is that you see how you're progressing every day. You start, you know, you get uh, six out of 15 cards, then you get seven out of 15 cards, and then eventually you get to the 16 cards. But it's interesting how uh, I have always known that you need to train your, your smell and your palate, but I've never seen it as a, as a such a thorough process as going through this so my respect to people who actually live with this with this the, you know the, this situation without smell and taste because it's it's not it's not a good thing to have man especially in yeah. our yeah. in our trade when i so when i lost my taste and smell um i knew it like right away it was like you know this is what's happening I didn't know how frustrating that was going to be because I knew I needed to eat, but I love to taste my food so much. I love flavors. I love smells. I, you know, and I think it was like day three or four. I got so mad. I went to the refrigerator and I bit an onion, <laughs> a whole onion, nothing. Yo, you couldn't taste anything at all. Nothing. That's... It burned the piss out of my eyes. Yeah. But nothing i was so mad i i felt the, exactly the same way as you describe it right now man i went and i don't you don't generally don't eat hot sauce but my wife eats a lot of hot sauce and i went out man all in with the hot sauce yeah and i couldn't feel it my brain knew that the, the tongue was on fire but i couldn't right. feel it i was like what yes. the hell it was sort yeah. of a disconnect between we are your physical and your mental it was it's crazy it's crazy I did the same thing. So then I started adding a lot of hot sauce to the soups and stuff that I would eat just to feel something. Yeah. You know? So Juan, the last time we had you on the show, we were talking about this a little bit before we went live. The last time we had you on the show was all the way back on uh, episode 46, which was February of 2020 before. Light years away, man. Let yeah, and, and we were saying it feels like I mean it was only 18 months ago or, or 15, 16 months ago, but it feels like 10 years because the whole world's different. Um and obviously over the last 18 months, um there uh, all yourselves included, Hoya de Nicaragua and a lot of other cigar companies obviously announcing uh new products, working hard on new products in the factory and uh doing the best you can really with the the way supply chains and shipping lanes are are really kind of messed up right now um so i want to one of the things i wanted to do tonight uh because we weren't um you know able to talk to you about these products last year because this we talked before some of these products got announced but we wanted to talk to you about some of the new stuff that has been gradually announced through press releases and things like that over the last six or eight months but you know give a chance for for you to showcase these products a little bit talk about them and and uh give our viewers an opportunity to find out when they might be able to expect them in their stores sure thank you and i appreciate that and indeed it has been it's been a challenge and we were talking earlier and how 
when we everything all of this began when we actually began had the last conversation in february 2020 was a different world our expectations yeah. our plans were completely different uh covid as in, everybody came out and 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 took everything uh uh and and flipped it up upside down and and, and everything and last year was quite interesting because we were able to get to market with our new introductions which weren't a lot actually it was a uh, a few sizes, a new introductions of uh, Cinco Deca and the Numero Uno that we got uh, actually the Le, Le Premier, which is the size that I'm smoking. And we did that successfully even in the midst of the pandemic. But we, what we didn't anticipate was what go, was going to happen the year following, meaning 2021. So we knew that there were going to be challenges with logistics. We knew that were going to be challenges with a few things, but we never knew that the challenges were going to be so big from the ink for the for the boxes or the the beside us the metal parts for the boxes or wood for the boxes or some simple thing that wasn't available because the shipping container from wherever it came wasn't available or because the ship that was bringing the materials was stuck in the panama canal in right. a line that that basically <laughs> was a month long so we had yeah. materials that were in ship docked in the ocean for a month waiting for all of the containers to pass through the the panama canal so all of that of course uh, as it has done to you know uh, cars and, and and computers and chips and uh, and every single basically every single product that you can imagine has affected our our, our trade in a very interesting times, when you see the numbers, you see that cigar smokers are enjoying more cigars today than they were in the, any time in the recent history. Obviously, people have gone back and appreciated uh, smoking and enjoyment and, and their experiential um, um, joys that brings smoking cigars by themselves or together back with friends and lounges and all that. So we've had from one side a pull from demand everybody wanting to smoke more and more and more and then the drawback from the supply chain that we have the cigars available the cigars were rolled were made they're well aged and everything but we didn't have the bands or we didn't have the plastic or we didn't have there was a point uh early this year that we got a notice from the biggest uh, our maker of uh carton master carton boxes where we ship the boxes to our distributors around the world that there was no carton available and that we're going to be left without carton boxes. Who would have thought that we're going to be right. have a shortage of carton boxes? You know, when you, and when you add all of those things, this year has been a challenge to get everything that you do not control, trying to figure out how to control it or how to improve it. So that's sort of the long story of, on what has happened to our, to our trade. Uh, thank God that we have been able still with that to sell and, 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 and get cigars to the hands of our smokers and retailers around the country and around the world. Uh, so this year, we were supposed to come out sometime in July to market with a couple of introductions. And I'm going to start out with the, I think, the most, one of the special ones. Well, both of them are, are actually quite special, but this one has to do with the legacy of Antonio. So this is called Antonio Gran Reserva GT20. And it's basically the celebration of 20 years of Antaño as a brand. Uh, as many of you know, Antaño was one of the first well-known Nicaraguan brands, Nicaraguan puro brands to come out in the market. It was introduced in the year 2001. Um, and it was actually quite special because it was the first full Nicaraguan puro to come out of the market. And this is in, in a period of, in time in where in which uh, Nicaraguan cigars were still not well known as they are today. So this cigar came to blow out everything out of the market, and it did so, and it started a trend um, of the popularity of Nicaraguan tobacco. And this is for us, not only, uh, Antaño is not only one of our most important brands, it's for us our legendary brand, uh, for what it represents for its, its, its legacy that has brought to market, its popularity, it's our best-selling brand in the United States. So in order to commemorate, not the 20 years in the past of the brand, but to commemorate the future and the continuous growth of this brand, we just came out with this regular production but special edition, Antaño Gran Reserva GT20. It's the Antaño Gran Reserva blend, which simply is the Antaño blend 
with uh, more aged tobaccos, tobaccos that have been aged for five or more years. Uh, mm. And this is a Grand Toro format. It's a six by 54. So the GT20 mm. stands for the Grand Toro 20. Although, to be honest, it was originally conceived to mean something else, like something when you upgrade the experience of, let's say, a car that you properly, properly know. Uh, you cannot use the term, but uh, it's sort yeah. of like an upgrade uh, level uh, of experience. Yeah, a high, with a this. higher performance car. Yeah, exactly. A higher performance. And this is what it is. Uh, Antonio and Reserva GT20. This should be hitting stores this month, actually. We already began shipping from Nicaragua in July, so it should be uh, heading to uh, cigar shops around the country uh, anytime this month, in the, anytime in the, in, the next few, in the next few weeks, I, I, I hope. If UPS and the other uh, shipping things uh, don't mess it up because they've yeah. been messing it up for us terribly. Lately. Yeah, well, that's, um, I'm going to throw a picture up on screen here for our viewers just to get a. Oh, there you go. That's, this is this is one of the nice uh, uh, publicity shots that was uh, uh, that was up on the uh, the Hoya Cigars website, and uh, yeah, it's just a really the 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 look is it's bold and uh, it's just kind of it's it's kind of badass. I it mean, it's really just got is. this. It's just really got this this really great vibe to the look and and if it's if if it's based off the uh you know uh, the uh the original Antonio 1970 blend then i uh, i'm in count me in because that's that was one of the one of the earliest examples of it, that i can recall at least uh there were others before it but there were that was one of the earliest examples that i can recall like you said that really truly showcased Nicaraguan tobacco and flavor profiles that, that people now try to copy, I think, and emulate in some way. And there's, uh, that's, that's still one of the best examples of it. I think on the market. When you feel the beauty, that, sorry, ahead, I was going to say, if you look at that GT 20, just that logo, if I had Eleanor, AKA 1965 Mustang fastback, that is what I would want the decals to look like. Yeah. Do, w doesn't that go great? Like on a classic muscle car. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, good stuff. I love it. Yeah. That, that was sort of like the, the inspiration that we got, you know, from, from this concept of the Gran Turismo performance high that it's the car that you love, but just that little kick on horsepower on, on style and all that. Uh, yeah, the Shelby of the cigar world. There you go, Skip. Good, good, good comment. Thank you, man. Um, and, and I have to say, the beauty about Antonio and the reason why we're so proud of it is because this is a cigar that breaks a lot of molds in a way, even though it's a it's a legacy brand with more than 20 years, 10, 20 years that we're celebrating. Um, it's a cigar that to this date, and a lot of people don't don't believe me, but I have to say, and it's completely the truth. You can come down to the factory and you can ask around and, and you can dissect the cigar and you will find that this cigar contains the same tobaccos from the same origin, from the same soil, from the same varietal, from the same farm for 20 years. And an industry that's organic in nature, which is made of blends that contains tobacco from different origins, different seasons, different uh, harvests, it's very difficult to maintain consistency over time. Uh, so just a few brands overall are able to keep that. And we're very proud of that, of Antonio being that consistent uh, le legacy brand, not only in terms of the blend and the brand itself, but also in terms of the construction and the tobaccos, the tobaccos that we work with, the tobaccos that we specialized, and the representation of Esteli as the cigar capital of the world, but most importantly, as the rich tobacco soil that when you visit you guys been to us today you remember that black clay soil when you see oh, yeah. that soil in the farms that is what it represents nicaraguan tobacco in its essence in its core so we're very proud and happy about antonio and and you know seeing it today performing better than a lot of our newest brands and performing better every year it's something to, to be very proud of and that's sort of that commemoration of of that future that we aspire for for Antonio as a brand. Absolutely. Now, um, we also have... Go ahead, go ahead. I guys. was just going to say, we, we never showed, we never let people know what we're 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so so quickly, Garrett and I will talk about what we are smoking, oh, which is – so, so and Juan, you need uh, – as far as I know, this is it, this is a newly released size or a soon-to-be-released size of the Antonio, Connecticut, the Corona Gorda. Well, it's actually one of the, I think, five sizes that we have available in the U.S., but it's, yeah, okay. it's one that we're just uh, pushing lately. Uh, we have the Robusto, we have the Toro, we have the Velicoso. We have the Corona Gorda, and I'm not sure which other size is available in the U.S., but that's more of a limited. Mm -hmm. And that cigar in particular is the core, the, the fillers in, in the Antaño Cete are the same as in the Antaño, except with the blonde Connecticut shade wrapper. Um, and, mm -hmm. and our intention was to have this full-bodied, mild smoke that ended up being a beautiful, complex, yet uh, uh, and flavorful cigar. You know, it's, uh, It was named Cigar of the Year by Half Wheel, in 2019 so it was a it's been on a roll it's been on a roll and we really did a good a good job on that i think we spoke about that uh that effort uh, last time that uh that we were yeah on the show. yeah it's a, it's a, up until now it's it was only the toro uh that i had smoked and i had smoked i think when we when we did our year in review mm -hmm. so just really quickly one at the end of the year we we didn't do a, a like top 25 cigars of the year list last year. What we did instead was a year in review where I have this, this case that my wife made for me that I put all my cigar bands in after I'm done smoking them for the year. And then we opened up that case and went through all the stuff that I smoked throughout the year. And, and a lot of stuff Garrett smoked too. Here, let me do a little recap of what it looked like. And yeah, I'm oh, when we went through the case, yeah, seriously, like it was, it was like, Oh, Antonio, Connecticut, Antonio, Connecticut, right, over right. and over throughout the year. So that was that cigar was very highly represented in my sm smoking experience for 2020. A lot yeah, of I have to, I'm happy to read that. I had the same thing. I had a I had a box that I put all my labels in, and I had I had it present a lot during the year last year. Yeah. So, uh, what uh, what did you have next that you wanted to uh, show everybody? The, yeah, this is this is another. Uh, this is quite unique. Uh, we have, so uh, in our brand family, we have, uh, or a brand collection, we have uh, like three or four main families. You have the Antaño is one of family, which has the Gran Reserva, the 1970, the Antaño del Corojo, and the Antaño Connecticut, the city. city. Uh, we have the Hoya family, where we have the Hoya Red, Hoya Silver, Hoya Black, Hoya Cabineta, Hoya Copper, and all that. And then we have the Obras Maestras. The Obras Maestras is our uh, pr uh, premium sort of celebratory brands that commemorates something really special beyond our, you know, beyond a birthday, beyond something else. Um, we call it masterpieces, the Obras Maestras, in which we have Cuatro Cinco. We have Cinco Decas, which was our 50th anniversary cigar. And then we have Numero Uno also. All of them have to do with numbers. And then this year we're doing just one time, and this is really, really limited. This is called Doscientos. And this is basically a commemoration of the bicentennial of independence of uh, Central America from the Spanish crown in 1821. So what we wanted to do here is pay tribute to a lot of, to, to the history of the beginnings of the, the, the tobacco industry in our region, not only in Nicaragua, but in our region. Uh, tobacco was originally from our continent. Um, so when the Spanish first, first discovered Latin America, they encountered uh, our, uh, our Indians, our ancestors, smoking these brown leaves either in pipes or, or in their mouth. And they, was, they used it as rituals for, uh, you know, military ceremonies or for, for whatever celebrations. They would combine it with chicha, which is what our, our local um, alcoholic drinks, with uh, cocoa, which also is uh, from our region. And they would make this sort of uh, ceremonies around and with tobacco. And tobacco was, was, without a doubt, one of the most important elements of our culture before we were colonized as, uh, as Americans by the Spanish. Obviously, the Spanish discovered tobacco and they started trading it and they made it the sort of the industry that eventually became. But tobacco is dear to our culture, to our heritage, to our, to our, to our customs. Uh, to our culture. So when the Spanish came 200 years ago and discovered, and then eventually we independent, uh, not 200 years, they came in 1500, in the 1500s, but we independent, we got independence in 1821. So it was also an independence of culture of from the Spanish 
together. And tobacco always played a very important role, not only in terms of the culture and the, and the mysticism, but also in terms of the economy. So when 1821 Central America, which includes Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica got independence, it was when we started crafting our own uh, future, our own identity as peoples, as, as cultures, and tobacco always played an important role. So with this, we wanted to celebrate on that unique celebration of 200 years of independence, also by combining the Latin American spirit. So in this blend particularly, we are combining tobaccos from most of our regions. We're actually not only Central America. We have in, a, in this blend, we have tobaccos from Mexico, from the Dominican Republic, from Honduras, from Nicaragua, and from Ecuador. So it's a beautiful blend containing some of the best tobaccos of Latin and American. And it, it's a tribute to our countries, to our culture, to our heritage, and to what we've done together in our industry. So this is yeah. Los Cientos. It's part of Ovas Maestras. And it should be also arriving. Uh, this one is shipping right now. So it should be coming uh, to cigar shops uh, sometime in August, early September. So we'll nice. still be able to get it to your hands. We had a lot of things planned with this release, including a very special Independence Day event to launch the cigar with smokers. Unfortunately, due to all of the supply chain things, we have to postpone also the event for a later date that we'll be announcing soon uh, to smoke together with smokers uh, around the world. And this, this, our designers did a fantastic job incorporating a lot of the elements of independence. We have 21 cigars, so 20 normal cigars, and the, 20, the 21st cigar, which is in basically independent from the rest, was the cigar to be saved, to be uh, uh, taken, to be smoked together on that event that we're going to be, be holding. So that's Doscientos, which in Spanish means 200, to celebrate the bicentennial of independence of Latin America and our joining of our cultures and our heritage together uh, of the region. So the blend is actually quite an interesting blend. It's different because... We as Hoya Nicaragua specialized in working with Nicaraguan tobacco, but this one is a it's, it's an interesting blend, uh, very complex, very dynamic. It comes in a six by 54 um, shaped cigar. Uh, so it's a long, thicker gauge that we're used to working. Uh, so we hope that people enjoy it and come celebrate with us together. Yeah, that, that's a great story. And I love the I, I love the fact that you're you're using your, you know, company's resources to not just i mean not just um celebrate nicaraguan tobacco but celebrate all of latin america and and that's such a beautiful thing because there are and you talked about ceremony that that this and we've talked about this a little bit on the show before as well that that tobacco is so uh so historic when it comes to ceremony for 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 latin people and 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 native people and it's it's something I appreciate that this project is 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 paying homage to and paying tribute to that that ceremonial part and the 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 multicultural part that goes into everything that makes up Latin America. I think that's a beautiful project. I do too. And, and, and it, and, go ahead, Jared. Sorry, I always put you off. No, it's all good. We we jump all over each other. I think. Um, so I love history. I love the little history lesson you just gave us. And that made it made me think, have you dug in to your genealogy and where your family has come from and what that history looks like? I, I have, I have, we have as a family, um, a lot of, a lot of Latin America and especially Central America, we are a product of a mestizaje, which is basically the combination of the Europeans or other immigrants with the locals. So I actually have quite a diverse background, which is not necessarily representative of Nicaragua. I have background from Europe, from, from uh, Poland, Spain, but I also do have a lot of uh, uh, lineage from Mexico, from Nicaragua. So it's a, it's a, it's a mixture of cultures and identities that basically represent uh, what we are as, as people. And that's very common in, in Latin America, even between Latin American countries. You can have, you know, Colombian descent or, or Brazilian uh, mm -hmm. or even Cuban, you know. And by the way, I have to say, this blend particularly, this concept also pays tribute 
to Cuba in a way because uh, we respect and we appreciate that Cuba was at the forefront of the, the cigar production, premium handmade cigar production. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we cannot use Cuban tobacco in this blend. But for us, it's a bringing together of all those um, identities that have contributed collectively to this uh, to this beautiful industry that has grown to a level that has become one of the most important industry in some of our countries. For example, in Nicaragua, northern Nicaragua depends a lot on tobacco and cigar making. Of course, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, uh, what it has done to southern Honduras. In Mexico, Ecuador has a booming tobacco growing region, even though they don't make necessarily uh, handmade cigars. So when you think about the impact and the collective effort, it's not just one country or just one group of people, or just one city or just one brand that is responsible to, you know, bringing this beautiful art form and this craftsmanship up. It's a collective effort. And this, in a way, tries to symbolize that. We as a company have tried always to, to look at the collective. We are as a country, as a producing country, we are only as good as our individual companies, but together we are bigger than one of them individually. So we feel that the efforts of where we have come as a, a, a cigar leading or cigar producing country in the forefront in the world, not only because of quantity of cigars, but also quality, it's that result of that collective mindset. And that's sort of what we wanted to do with this uh, paying tribute. It's not about us. It's not about my family. It's not about me. It's about everybody, in, you know, throughout the decades and throughout the centuries that have contributed in making this something that people continue to enjoy today. I challenge anyone to find another industry where that is spoken over and over again. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not out there, but I'm saying it is severely rare. And yeah. it is such a beautiful thing to uh, to hear you say that one and that to be echoed amongst many others in the industry. This is such a beautiful industry that we are a part of. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. And what I'm happy is that consumers appreciate that, you know, smokers. Yes. Because when you think about it, if you're in the, let's say, spirit, we're talking about Flor de Caña. You know, what was the last time that you actually had an event with the blender or the owner of Flor de Caña, even though it's a great rum? And I'm not talking about anything about the rum, but you don't have that connection between the makers, the blenders or the, you know, the bottlers. We do in some cases, and we've done great events with some whiskey bottlers in the UK, for example, some other, uh, you know, uh, makers. But it's not the same. It's not. It's not comparable. I think uh, the the level of intimacy that you you get through this uh, through, through this product, it's it's something that's that's quite unique. And in fact, it's one of the reasons why a lot of us continue in this trade. And that's a lot. Of, that's one of the reasons why we wake up in the morning and we continue doing what we do even in the midst of so many challenges and hardships that we might be facing regulation wise and restrictions and all that, we do it because it's a very, very unique thing that you cannot get anywhere else. You know, whatever, in whatever trade you work, it's very hard to get what, what we get in this break in this business. Yeah. So I also wanted to uh, ask you a little bit about the, the, it's, it's sort of a new version of, of, uh, Quattro Cinco the Edition Americana. Um, talk a little bit about that uh, project. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> um, so, yes. So this is actually, um, Cuatro Cinco is, by the way, my all-time favorite blend that we make at Hoya Nicaragua. Um, it's, uh, it's very dear to my heart. It was one of the first projects I actually started working on when I came into, not, not this particular blend, but the original Cuatro Cinco. Uh, so this time we wanted to do, we've had a couple of uh, TAA exclusive products. So this time we wanted to do something to commemorate um, the United States and our relationship with our most important market. So it was our first market of Hoya and Nicaragua and uh, doing something special with TAA, it's something that we always wanted to do. Uh, we had the, the Antonio Presidente and then we have this. Uh, so it's a very special Cuatro Cinco Helicoso, all exclusively for the TAA accounts. Um, it's a 10-count box, and it's part of the Obras Maestras. It's also limited. It's going to be limited, I think, to 500 boxes 
this year that have been already allocated to TAA accounts. And Cuatro Cinco is actually, um, th this is the blend that we use to do regional things. So last year we did our Cuatro Cinco Edición Asia, which was uh, Chinese, uh, Asian, Pacific exclusive. Mm. Uh, this year we're doing it this for for TAA in the United States. So okay. you can see everything that's paying tribute to. Um, there you go. No, it's, it's beautiful. And I love the I, I love the fact that it still has the look of that original Quattro Cinco, but it's it's just got a few new design elements to to show it off for the new uh, TAA exclusive. I think that's beautiful. It is sexy. Yeah. 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 So we're quite excited about that. Uh, that one, I think it's already on the sh some shelves or should be getting to stores as we speak because that was already okay. shipped earlier this year. Nice. Yeah. And the, the one other one that I that I uh, looked up and, and heard about recently, um, and, and I could be off base on the dates for this one, but is the, um, the Classico Medio Siglo. So is oh. that is that a is that a new size or is that a new uh, special uh, edition of the blend? No, that's actually a new or less sort of an extension of the classical blend. So the classical is the original Hoya Nicaragua that's been produced since 1968. So that blend, that brand has continued to be. We eventually that was what or Hoya Nicaragua was originally called. Eventually, we added a classical to make it different from the other uh, Hoya Nicaraguas. Um, but that has been in the market, and it's our best-selling cigar outside of the United States. It's a milder blend with a Connecticut shade wrapper. Um, in this case, thanks to demand from some key markets, Germany, Switzerland, and some other, uh, we decided to introduce the Medio Silo, which is the Criollo version, sun-grown version of the classic. However... That blend is that brand is only available outside of the United States. It's actually not available in the United States. Okay. So it's on okay. our website, but it's not gonna be coming into the United States because we don't have the classical uh, yet in the United States unless people start asking about it in a Drew Estate. Wink wink, wink wink, Drew Estate <laughs> gets convinced. And uh, you hear that, Joe? You hear yeah, that, Joe? <laughs> Uh, no, that's, yeah, that's that's good, and it's it's uh, it's actually cool, you know. E uh, even though we as United States cigar smokers would definitely love to see it in our brick and mortar shops here, uh, we we do have people from uh, many countries outside of the U.S. who watch and listen to the show. So, um, you know, that's that's something that uh, you 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 guys who have uh, cigar shops outside of the U.S. that uh, that you know carry uh hoya cigars definitely be on the lookout for that one because uh yeah it's already it's already it's been it's already been sold in germany switzerland i think spain the uk is coming soon in asia is there and mexico uh and possibly other countries in latin america so it's a it's a, it's a great blend it's a, it's yeah. actually you know the classical that's there are a lot of differences in the preferences in smokers around the world that what people enjoy in the United States is quite different from what they enjoy in Europe or Latin America. And historically we've had this great divide between what it does goes well in the cigar smokers palettes in all of these regions. This however, has been changing very dramatically over the past few years as people get more, you know, as you guys come abroad on board and, and, and people are watching you were in anywhere in the world, uh, through YouTube or Facebook, uh, the preferences start are starting to slowly come and unify more into the center where before full-bodied cigars were enjoyed primarily in the United States, the Europe was more in the mild segment. Uh, now we see more demand for fuller-bodied cigars in Europe and more milder cigars in the United States too. So we see the gravitation thanks to the, the role that social media and you guys play in bringing about, you know, awareness and, and more relevance to, uh, to our industry worldwide. Well, when we talk about the American market, we talk about the European market, the growing Asian market, and we've just barely tiptoed into the Latin American market. 
Can you kind of tell us, give us a little tour, what that looks like in comparison to the others? It's interesting because it's Latin America has always been there, particularly because of its relationship with Cuba. So we've always in the region have access to, to Cuban cigars. But it wasn't until recently, I would say in the past uh, 10 years, that actually as cigar smoking has become more of a exclusive and more of a accessible also at the same time, we've seen more uh, spaces opening up in Mexico City, for example. Mexico is a, is a great market. It's millions of people. Just in the city of Mexico, DF, uh, Distrito Federal, you have you know thousands of smokers of, of, of cigars, then you have Brazil, which is a huge country too. And they, you've gone, as people travel to the United States, co coming from the United States, they, go to, they come to cigar shops in the U.S. and they, they come back to their country and they start smoking and sharing. And then, you know, you suddenly see this WhatsApp groups opening up and then Facebook groups opening up. And then suddenly you have a blowout of lounges, actually quite nice establishments opening up in a lot of countries in, 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 in Latin America. So... Argentina, Brazil, even Venezuela, even it's with political thing, they do have a couple of nice smoking lounges. Uh, you have Mexico. It's a, it's a great, great place. And uh, we're opening up also in other countries in the region. So their preferences are more aligned with what you would expect from Europe in the sense of more Cubanesque profiles, more milder, more medium, more balanced sort of styles of smoke, smaller ring gauges. But that also is changing. We see uh, Latin Americans going to the United States last year, particularly because they couldn't travel as often. We saw an uptick in demand from smokes that uh, that were being uh, requested in um, in. Hey, Allison, miss you too, my dear. Um, I love Allison, man. They have yeah, she's, she's the best. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've seen an uptick, and, and it's interesting yeah. because in the United States, it's difficult to measure it, but a lot of the smokes sold in the United States are from smokers from other places. They come and they, you know, even from Nicaraguans, even Nicaragua, which is a cigar-producing country, a lot of the cigar smokers down here bring cigars from the United States. One, they're cheaper, ironically, uh, and yeah. two, we don't have a lot of shops uh, in the country as you would have in the United States. So you would have people enjoying their first Nicaraguan cigars, ironically, in the United States, and then coming down and saying, oh, you know, I smoke this and this. How, how can I get it? So it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, social media, it, it's, 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 I remember coming into the industry before social media was popular. I know Facebook, Facebook was starting out around 2006, 2007. We didn't have Instagram, of course. We didn't have YouTube. Uh, as a popular, uh, you know, channel for communication. And uh, we didn't have Twitter either. But I think Instagram, for example, has played a tremendous role in visualizing the products um, yes. and creating this awareness. Now, I, I, I suddenly I don't know where these places are in some state, in some instances where there people are smoking our cigars. So I think one of the biggest influences in our industry has been uh, social media, but not social media driven by us but driven by consumers, you know, they're not what we do, not what we promote, but what people smoke, the shares, they, 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 the clubs, they, they join and, and, and all of this. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. The, I'm glad you said that because you're, you're so right about that, that social media for the cigar culture is really driven by the consumers and people are, there's, there's a great, um, spirit of generosity in the cigar community and seeing people sharing uh sharing cigars and um you know you, you you people meet on social media that's the that's the thing about social media and cigars is people people get to know each other on social media through cigars and then they get to know about different brands and they find out things that they want to try because they hear oh this sounds like it's got uh, tobaccos that I would enjoy because of these other things I've tried. And then you get together at an event or at a cigar shop or something like that. And people open up their travel humidors and they're all sharing cigars back and forth. And that's one of the beautiful things about this cigar culture is, and you could, it, it could happen regardless of where you go in the world. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I guarantee it. You could go to any cigar shop 
in any country and the the type that type of feeling would be present no matter where you go yeah yeah it reminds me of baseball cards yeah do you remember you know you'd, yeah, yeah. you'd get your friends together and you'd have these baseball cards you'd be like oh i don't have that one and if he had one the difference is back then you would trade cards and i know that there's some trading that happens but for the most part if somebody says i haven't had that one here yeah have it that's and that is so it's not just common for for us cigar media people that i we know dozens hundreds yes. of people from who are just ever you know that they're they're firefighters or they're plumbers or they're they're doctors or lawyers and you get together somebody opens up their travel humidor and some somebody across the room or or across the park says i haven't tried that one what do you do you like that cigar and they'll say you know what here take one mm -hmm. try it enjoy it it's so for me for me social media um has brought sort of another layer to the industry before well, it continues to be. The Cigar Lounge is sort of a, this mystic space of camaraderie, of socialization, of sharing, of, you know, of being present with your fellow cigar smokers. But they tend to be localized to a specific place, a specific group that they generally already are friends or they already hit it off. But that was the place where you would get exposed not only to gossip or news, but also to new trends, cigars and everything. So you go to a cigar lounge, anywhere in the world, and, and you have this great group of people, very diverse, that have different perspectives, different opinions, and they, they you know, recommend, they criticize, and all this. But then now you have social media, which is a translation to that, in which it's actually a non-discrimination scheme, because anywhere can see what, any who, anybody can see what you're smoking, and you can see what everybody else is smoking, too. So in a way, it's not, you know, there's no elitism involved in, oh, I go to this X, Y shop, or I go to this, you know, this place. It's sort of, we're in the same place. We're in the same phone. We're in the same platform. You don't own it. I don't own it. Uh, I'm actually not having to deal with all maybe nonsense of other people speaking. I'm just focused on you. And I, I follow your advice because I don't, you're not selling anything to me. You know, you're not a company in theory. You're not selling anything to me, although you have then influencers who are get paid and promoted, but that's a different, that's a different game. And the other layer, which is maybe invisible for most people, but for me specifically and for us at Hoya de Nicaragua and at Drew Estate, is perhaps the biggest value of all, is that it makes us accountable. So mm -hmm. I'm on social media yep. and I see your post. I see your criticism. I see your yep. cigar blown up for whatever reason or your wrapper breaking up or whatever excess glue on the band that was put on that broke your wrap. And or I see your comment. You're not you're you're just posting a comment that says this cigar is fantastic. I love it. Or this cigar. I hated it for whatever reason. I am accountable for that. And I'm watching you and I'm a literally an instant message away from that, either from your side to me or from me to you. And that's a very powerful tool because anything that we do, we are thinking about the consumer. Now, we're not thinking about only the distributor and the and the retailer and then eventually the consumer which is how my my father operated they, they didn't have social media in 1996 1997 1998 you know they would exchange faxes not even emails they would exchange <laughs> faxes still and they would say you know oh, this cigar is selling great and order me this for next year or whatever but now that accountability uh, which is what has made us as an industry one of the reasons why we as an industry are better today than what we were 20 years ago, 25 years ago, is that accountability. I am responsible for the name and for the uh, for the for the image of the company that I represent, of the brands. For every single brand, every cigar that you guys smoke, we are accountable for that. And I am literally a step away from the factory floor and say, you guys look at this. And in fact, it's not only me, the Boncheros, the Roleras, the guys at the factory are more on top of what you guys are smoking than sometimes myself because those guys are on social media too. So you can yeah. imagine that you're breaking down boundaries, hundreds of years of boundaries, and these guys at the factory, they don't even need to speak English now because it translates automatically for them. The Facebook post, the Instagram post is translated to them in a powerful way. 
So that accountability for us, it's, it's of great value, you know, and, and we appreciate that. And, and we accept criticism because we know we are not perfect, uh, but it makes us better. Uh, social media has made our industry substantially better. So one of the questions that we... Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. that's another yeah. wink, wink for your sponsor up there, Drew Estate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, somebody Joe. start tagging Joe Grow. Somebody yeah, start tagging yeah. Joe Grow and get and make sure he knows. <laughs> I yeah. tried to keep it together for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as that comment came up, I was like, oh, I can't wait for a break. <laughs> uh, yes. That's right. that. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry, Allison. Don't worry, Garrett. We'll, 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 we'll have some something on the works. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but in any case, I think that's something that we appreciate and we're very thankful um, because – for everybody to know, cigar companies cannot pay in advertisement. We cannot be in social media promoting. We cannot. We don't oh, pay yeah. a cent. Right. Everything that right. you see in the cigar world, unlike any other business, unlike supplements and, and pharmaceutics and communications and cell phones and all that, all that is organic. It's dispensaries. Can, yes, you can advertise dispensaries. Yeah, you can advertise. Right. You can advertise marijuana all day long, but you can't just say, "Hey, try this cigar." You can't even say that. When 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 we got our first Facebook police message a while ago when we were promoting an ad back in 2011 or 2010, I don't remember, that said that tobacco was in the same boat as drugs, weapons, alcohol, ironically, even though alcohol is sort of, I don't know why they still promote it, and um, pornography and child trafficking. It's like, yeah. okay, yes. you, you are giving me the two to set up filters to make sure that nobody under 21 sees my advertisement, but you're still banning me and putting me in that pool. That's crazy, but that, that's fine. We can live with that uh, yeah. because we still appreciate the opportunity to be, to be engaging. So uh, I just wanted to wrap it up and say that uh, the fact that we're able to do this, you know, talking live to people and sharing their comments and their feedback, this is a tool and people ask us right now, it feels like a boom. For anybody out there that says, you know, right now, it's crazy the amount of cigars being sold. And, yeah. and not given by the imports from countries publicized by Cigar Aficionado and the customs. Literally, by the amount of cigars you guys are smoking. We are very thankful for your trust. Uh, we work very hard, even with all the challenges that we have to bring the cigars to you guys. But the people ask us, how is this different from the cigar boom of the 1990s, for example, that I didn't go through, but my father did and a lot of our people did. It's very different because back then, and I was mentioning, fax was the main communication. Email was starting up. Back at the factory, we had one computer with one email address in 2000. Imagine that. Now, this is, we're seeing it. We're experimenting it at the same time. We're doing it live with you guys. Yeah. Uh, back then, it was a different. It was it was like the prehistoric times, man. When you know messages came out weeks and weeks after that. Um, right. Now the beauty of this is that we can see, we can feel, we can almost experience and enjoy cigars with you guys. So we're well. This is a different game. This is a different ball game for everybody. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's huge. Um, I wanted to also talk about, and we talked about this a little bit again before we went live. Um, because a lot of people who are, I mean, the va we know that the vast majority of cigar consumers don't necessarily watch long interview cigar podcasts like this. And, and we understand that. We, we want them to watch and we welcome them to watch. But most people still, you know, uh, you know, they go to the shop, they buy their brands, they sit and they smoke and they go home. And... At the same time, there's so many people who are gaining an appreciation for the everything that goes into making these great products. And part of that is uh, visiting these countries, visiting mm -hmm. Nicaragua and vis visiting Esteli, visiting visiting, uh, you know, southern Honduras and visiting Dominican Republic and seeing with their own eyes how these products are made. And th there was a really booming business with uh factory tours and things like that of course covid uh caused all that to come to a screeching halt so i want you to talk to us a little bit about 
the state of things with the Nicaraguan Chamber of Tobacco, with Puro Sabor, and with with uh, where you see the future of things for uh, for factory tours and uh, that part of the 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 experience that can grow the culture even more for cigar smokers. Cigar tourism. Cigar tourism. Yeah. That that cigar tourism has was also or has been a game changer for our industry, of course. Uh, Drew Estate was at the forefront of that with Cigar Safari, for example, since 2007. And it was the ideal space to connect, to experience, not only from your side as, as, as visitors, um, in order to experience and feel with your bare hands the soil, the roughness of the soil or the climate and the sun in your head with that big hats that you would put on or drink your hell out of Nicaraguan beer and rum, um, and enjoy overall Nicaraguan culture. I think that was a fundamental connection with our products that made the overall cigars experience uh, substantially, if not exponentially, better. Uh, Cigar Safaris, uh, almost every relevant factory in Nicaragua had a program to bring people, not only retailers and cigar media, but also cigar smokers, to Nicaragua and spend some time enjoying getting to know the people, getting to know the, the local heritage, the culture, to feel the, the warmth and love of Esteli and their people or travel around Nicaragua. And that's been crucial. And it's been crucial for Cuba, for the Dominican Republic, for Honduras, and for Nicaragua. It also is crucial because it sort of this uh, unmystifies a lot of things, a lot of misconceptions of our countries, of our cultures, of our people, and of our industry overall. Once you set foot at the cigar factory, and I would speak about my own factory, Orger Estate, uh, it completely shifts your appreciation of this product that ironically, you burn to ashes. After seeing it, how long it takes to make every single cigar, how many people are involved, how many pairs of hands, how much commitment and dedication in the quality of this product, and all by hand. It's something that it's really uh, uh, impressive. And I've never met, I've never met anybody who hasn't been impressed. Not only cigar smokers, but we've had visitors from all around, all walks of life, and everybody comes out of the factory impressed by what they experience, what they live, what they see, and what they feel in the cigar factory. So cigar festivals, outside of the traditional programs from the factories, have been instrumental for that. Uh, Pro Cigar, and in our case, Puro Sabor, which is the Nicaraguan Cigar Festival that was held every year, every January, that brought together all of the relevant members of the cigar community in Nicaragua, the cigar industry, box makers, tobacco growers, tobacco processors, buyers, sellers from all over the world. We had hundreds and hundreds of people from all over the world coming to Nicaragua and having our Nicaraguan dish, dishes for breakfast and for dinner and, and dancing to the Nicaraguan music and drinking their Nicaraguan beers and enjoying their Nicaraguan tobacco and really in understanding and appreciating what goes behind making each one of these products. So that's, a, um, I would say, a key part of the whole overall cigar enjoyment experience. And I think it will continue to be so because it's never the same to watch it on a video, to watch it on a live or a Zoom or whatever. If you're not there, if you don't feel the aromas, if you don't touch the tobaccos, if you don't listen to the sounds of the chavetas in the floor, mm -hmm. boom, 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 click, 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 click. Yeah. Uh, if you don't go into those fermentation rooms and feel the intensity, if you don't go to those fields and see the, ma the, the, the majestic plants and their leaves growing, uh, in that lush green fields of tobacco, it's never the same. So I, 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 I'm very certain that they will continue to be an instrumental part of our industry and our promotions. Remember that we cannot promote anywhere else uh, just through that uh, because it's also, and most importantly, an educational process. It allows yeah. you to learn, appreciate the techniques, the science behind it, the art behind every cigar-making process that we have and every visit to a cigar factory is a different journey so that i invite anybody that has the opportunity to go to a cigar factory wherever that factory is located and whatever the size of that factory is to do it and appreciate it because it allows you also to really understand and appreciate cigars overall 
the good ones, the not so good ones, the expensive mm. ones, the not so expensive ones. So it's it's a really it's an invitation to continue doing this. However, for 2022, in our case, in the case of Nicaragua, it's very uncertain. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of logistical challenges to get in and out of Nicaragua with the whole COVID. Uh, we've had we've been all of our companies at the Nicaraguan Chamber of Tobacco, which is the organizer, and the, 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 uh, the association that brings all of us together, have been extremely responsible with the health and the well-being of our people. So if you go to a cigar factory today, if you get the chance to get, because if you come to our factory, you're not allowed to come in uh, right now. We have a ban for outside visitors. Even if you're a local from Nicaragua, you cannot come in because of COVID measures. Everybody's wearing masks. We have the divisions, the separation. Uh, you know, temperature taking three times a day when they when you come in, when workers at midday and in the afternoon, literally you have someone pointing the 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 the, the, the pistol, the temperature pistol to your head, <laughs> checking. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 a big burden because we want to make sure that remember uh, these are spaces where we have hundreds of people working in relatively close quarters. We want to make sure everybody stays safe. Uh, they, they stay healthy, not only for themselves, but also for their families. A lot of them uh, in Nicaragua, a lot of us live with our parents or our grandparents or older, more vulnerable populations. So we want to make sure that everybody's safe. So having a festival has its challenges. First, you have to do everything from early on. You have to plan it in advance, logistically, hotels, rooms, catering, uh, transport, uh, health insurance, everything. Now COVID testing, which are expensive, at least in your country. So we feel that at this point in time, it's very uncertain and we cannot commit to holding the, the festival in the beginning of January, even though we know some other countries have already committed to certain dates, uh, that we need, we need to be responsible because we understand also the challenges for people for planning and then from our plan, for unplanning when things are not going well. Um, so we, 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 we try to be responsible with everybody, with ourselves, of course, but also with with our guests, uh, without having a, a, a complete commitment of what's going to happen. But in any case, once we go over this hump, uh, the doors will be wide open. And as we are excited to hopefully come back sooner than later to do events on the road, to come to festivals and do, do all the things that we should be doing on the streets, uh, we will be as excited or even more to have people back at our factories. Yeah, it's and, it's important. Well, and I wonder since you know they're the same thing. I wonder if cigar, if uh, sorry, if cigarette companies have tours of their laboratories, <laughs> and vape companies have tours of their laboratories where they get to hear from the scientists about all of the the ways that they make their their blends and their juices. I mean, how many more they different probably do in some way. I yeah, but yeah, yeah. They are different in so many ways. Every way. Every uh, the way. Only, the only the only thing that is similar. Those who know who know, man. Yes. The only ones that don't know are the ones that don't know. Uh, yeah. The people who combine it, you know, when you think about cigars, the way they're made, the way the tobacco, natural, unadulterated, just time, humidity, aging. Uh, no chemicals, no preservatives, no additives. Nothing is added to tobacco, but also the way it's sold. You don't see, you know, younger people coming into cigar shops and give me a, a box of Antaños, man. You don't see that. <laughs> Not only because they're highly expensive, you know, the average cigar costs, what, seven, eight, ten dollars $10, depending on yeah. the state you're in. It's expensive. You don't expect people to be buying cigars when they're, you know, younger. So, and it, it, everything is different. Everything is different. But once you have this m mindset, it's difficult to change. But it's our responsibility to continue educating people. And, and you right. guys do an important role. You guys do a very, very important role because you are, in a way, objective, independent judges and transmitting this information to people. It's key. So we are very appreciative of anybody that can actually translate the truth. Because, of course, if we're doing it, we're biased. We are the industry. But if you guys do it and consumers do it, uh, it's it's a different game. Yeah. So one of the things that we talked about the last time you were on the show, we talked about cigar moments. Uh, and they're, and they, they, they're not even really cigar moments. They're moments that we have in our lives 
that um, are meaningful. They could be, you know, reflecting on a, a friend's wedding or the birth of a child or l- the loss of a loved one or a big event like a graduation or or a, a, a new job or a promotion or something like that. Um, and I, obviously everybody in life goes through these moments, but us as cigar smokers, um, uh, and I'm biased believing that we have, we, we have something that, that heightens these moments. We have something that brings these moments to an even deeper level. Uh, and, and it could even be when we reflect on these moments uh, alone with a cigar and a beverage and our, just our thoughts on, on, on what just transpired in our life. But that cigar smoke, there's something ceremonial. It goes back to the ceremonial piece about that, 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 that it helps in, in my opinion, it helps in reflection and it helps heighten that, that moment. And, and it turns it into a cigar moment. And, and it can also be with family or friends where, it's instead of just as an individual reflecting alone, it can be a group of people sharing in an accomplishment or uh, even even in some cases a tragedy where the cigar, um, it deepens the meaningfulness, in my opinion, of those moments. So over since we talked to you last, and obviously there's been so much going on in the last you know, year and a half around the world. Um, can, can you can you name think back to us a, a, a cigar moment that you've had in the last fifteen months or so that was that was just truly that sticks out in your head as meaningful? Yes, and and when when you mention it, it comes now as obvious. But please raise your hand if cigar smoking in the last fifteen months hasn't contributed or changed the way you feel, you think, uh, you reflect on primarily the challenges that we've had, have to face, even the way you interact with people while smoking through this, you know, if, 15 months ago, if you had thought, if we, if I had told you that we would spend a year and a half smoking cigars through a screen, you hmm. probably would say that's crazy, man. That's 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 unacceptable. You know, that's something that's gonna be impossible for our industry to adapt to. But in fact, I've done. I personally have done more than a hundred events with people from all over the world, from South Africa, Angola, uh, the UK, Switzerland, Hong Kong, Australia, Argentina, Mexico, the United States, Canada, and that simple fact of being able to go connect with them although virtually never the same but at least virtually has sort of changed my perspective and my connection with everybody before i had to actually travel to meet with a group of smokers and enjoy and celebrate or do whatever but i have to say for me personally beyond the business beyond doing everything that we do as a company uh, i have smoked i would say about three or four times more cigars in the last year than I would have on a regular year. And not only my cigars, not only our cigars, I've smoked more cigars from everybody else that actually my stash is empty. I'm no, I don't have any more cigars from anybody else, either gifted or purchased because I haven't been traveling, so I don't have the opportunity. But in that process, it has allowed me to, you know, spending the time alone, not having to go out, not having events, not having meetings, outside and having a little bit more time and appreciate the smoking experience has have has been a completely different um, as a cigar smoker experience than what it was even when we had this conversation 15 months ago um, you know just I would ne- I don't feel that I'll be able to go back to my previous normal in terms of my relationship with cigars the way that I enjoy, the way I change, the preferences that I develop through this time by myself. And I smoke primarily by myself in the last 50 months because every time I go to the factory, I'm with a mask. I'm wearing a mask. I'm not smoking while I'm working. The only moments that I can smoke, I'm actually smoking by myself. Um, So before, smoking was a lot of the social component. But now it's always social, but now it's very intimate. For me, it's become very intimate, the way I pair, the way I drink, the way I smoke. 
the blends, the sizes that I've smoked, the appreciation to other people's work has changed a lot. Because before I didn't really have time to smoke for appreciation of other people's talent, meaning other cigar makers' talent, just you know, just because either they gifted and I wanted to smoke something else, I was on the road and I didn't read it. But now being by myself, it's sort of uh, you know appreciating other people's art, man. It's 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 yeah. changed the way, and I appreciate that. And there are certain things, cer certain positive things that I uh, that I bring out of the the last year and a half. And one for one of those is that the ability to be able to appreciate things that before I was too busy, too crowded, too committed to, 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 to go. Even when you would go out and smoke with friends, you would always have a limited time frame, man. Nowadays, yeah. today, it's, I, have, I have the time. It's my time. If I go to bed early, late smoking cigars, I would do so. Um, so, yes, I think I would define my time, that moment, as my pandemic smoking time. I would say that has become sort of another category of that enjoyment, which is like the intimate yourself moment beyond the traditional. Yeah. No, that's, I, I really like the way you put that. That's yeah. so I, I'm actually going to give the same question to Garrett. Just, if, if there's a, if there's a moment that stood out to you in the last year and a half. Yeah. I think the, the first morning I got up before everybody uh, at our at our family cabin to sit out over the lake with a cup of coffee, and it was a Don Carlos uh, in the morning, and just hear the loons. Yeah, um, that cigar, you know, it's a it's a that whole experience just enhances everything course it was one of the best cups of coffee i'd ever had it was the best you know that helps that you know, helps a lot yeah and everything um with the scenery so that would have to be my one moment yeah it was <clears throat> for me it was at my um my birthday party oh yeah so you so we had they they threw this surprise party for me for my birthday and uh they set up a cigar bar outside and and sitting there with family and friends and with uh, uh with a, a belly full of great food and uh then sitting back with family and friends and smoking Again, a Don Carlos, a, Fuen, a Fuente Don Carlos, and uh, and just hearing everybody talk and just going around, seeing everybody who was there. You guys and, have to ship some of those Don Carlos this way, man. I want to, yeah. I want to smoke one of those. <laughs> and and also, this was a key thing for me was a couple family members. Who, yeah. who literally had never touched a tobacco product in their life said, could I have a cigar? And I said, of course you can. And I, I showed them, showed them how to cut it and light it and, and, and smoke it. And I think we may have some new, we'll see, but I think we may have some, some new members of the flock yeah. And and that's so great to hear, man. That's great was, to hear. It, it was just a great, great experience that day. Well, it, just not to go down that rabbit hole too much. It was so funny to hear, you know. So one of Matt's family members said, you know, I'm going to be having this girls' weekend. You know, this this makes me think I should maybe go and buy some cigars and, um, you know, a couple things for for us to enjoy. This seems like a really cool, relaxing thing. And I looked at her and like, d buy cigars? <laughs> Do you know what's inside this house right now? Yeah. And the man, that, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, she forgot about the fact that I have, I have a, I have a pretty good humidor here. So yeah, I imagine. So I was. How I, many cigars I, do you have there? Uh. Gosh. Probably three thousand. Yeah, I was, I'm about two, two thousand. Somewhere in there. So, 
Um, I know, I know a lot of people who have way bigger collections than that. And, um, a lot of people who have way less than that. It's just, that's, that's where the number, I think it's somewhere in that neighborhood today, but it was, yeah, it's, it's funny because, um, yeah, she, she said, I, I should buy some cigars that I just Garrett, <laughs> Garrett stopped me before I said it. He said, buy, you don't have to buy. You could just, you could just ask. <laughs> so yeah, that was, a, that was a good experience. Um, one thing I want to ask you before we go on to our next segment is, um, and I know this changes frequently for a lot of people, they'll go through phases where they, they like different things, but, uh, and I know you're also just coming back into smoking regularly again because, uh, of your illness, but it's, is there a particular Hoya cigar that you find yourself just reaching for more than any other? right now that's just your go-to Hoya cigar right now and it hasn't changed actually it's been there and, and that's the the one that i crave the most is the is the cabineta and it's actually in the corona and the corona size the corona gorda that you said it was god's uh god's uh ring gauge you said yeah. that right <laughs> Uh, yeah, 46 ring gauge. That's, right. uh, that's that's my go-to every day, uh, any moment of the day. It continues to be so since very early on. That was one of my first smokes, and it continues to be Hoya Cabineta. It's, it's like uh, it's a combination of that coffiness, creaminess, sweetness uh, with a lot of nuances there. It's a beautiful smoke. Yeah, and I also want to let everybody know that Garrett yeah. and I uh, did finish our Antonio, Connecticut's, and moved into the uh, Cinco de Caras. The Cinco de Caras in this fundador, which is a great. Uh, I'm enjoying the representation of the blend because it, as soon as Garrett lit his up before I did, and I got a little smell of it, and and right away I it just took me back. I said that is definitely that that is the Cinco de Caras blend. Yes, but okay. it's it's uh it's a it's a little bit. As far as I can tell, so far smoking this, it's it's it almost feels like a slightly bolder presentation of the blend, uh, m probably mainly due to the larger ring gauge. But it's it's really uh, it, it's almost just a slightly higher volume uh, version of the blend. I like it. Yeah, the uh, the cinco ecas for me, it's like that fatty big piece piece of steak that you yeah. have for dinner. That's almost. Um, uh, it's not meaty. It's the greasy to your palate. Oh, that leaves you that. That's Very it's a, it's it, it's yeah exactly. That's 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 how I feel Mi mixed with a deep dark chocolate, almost mm -hmm. ninety percent cocoa chocolate uh, without mm -hmm. any sugar. That's what Cinco Decadas represents for me. And indeed, that one is. Uh, I think it's a little bit bolder because of the size. Um, yeah. It's uh, the, the tobaccos, even though they're well, 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 super well aged. They continue to deliver this uh, meatiness that I think is quite quite unique to this to this blend. Yeah. So I think uh, is it time? Okay. Yeah. I All think right. It's time. It is now time for this week's Numero, Numero de, de los, los Muertos. Muertos. And as always, Numero de los Muertos is brought to us by our friends at Smoke In. Episode. Very Abe like that presentation. Huh? That is a very, very Abe ad. They were very gracious to send us some really well done video ads. Uh, so we got episode 121. We got Numero de los Muertos. Garrett, what is it this week? All right. This week's number. I remember eight. this segment now, man. Yeah. Yeah. This is a weird ass segment now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. The number is 3,500 people in the U.S die from this every year and it uh it is uh north america only i should say us only you all right so every year 
in the United States, 3,500 people die from this. Yep. 10 year average. All right. As always, viewers, if you guys have guesses, leave them in the comments. Um, Juan and I are going to play 20 questions here and see what we can narrow this down to. Um, is it a natural <laughs> phenomenon? <laughs> yeah. Is, is it a natural phenomenon? Skip Martin's in the comments here saying toxic yeah. shock syndrome. Um, no, sir. No, not toxic shock. Um, That's too few. <laughs> you have more people dying out of that, I think. Yeah. Um, natural. Um, what do you? By the way, shout out to Skip Martin and his new place out in San Juan de Sur. I'm looking out forward for my invitation, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful, I, beautiful place. Fiorella yeah. is going to have a great time there growing up there, man. Yes. Uh, it is not vehicular. It's not lightning strike. Is it, uh, is it workplace related? It is not. Is it bloody? It is not. Huh. Is, is it on land or water? Anywhere. Either. Yep. Are vehicles involved? It is not vehicular. Oh, not yeah. vehicular. Sorry. Um, Uh, is it disease related? Yeah, it is disease related. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, subaquatic animal going through someone's um, intestines or wow. or places in the in the system. It is not parasitic. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> or any of that. <laughs> Um, it is not choking on a toothbrush. Wow. Yeah, some good guesses this time. Um, um, oh, wow. Skip says vaccine side effects. No, it's not. No? Oh, weird. <laughs> weird. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> is it... Uh, oh, yeah, Chad, the doctor... Very good question. Is no, it bacterial or this viral? Is not the, this is not the doctor. Oh, Chad. Oh, sorry. The different other, Chad. The other Chad. Different Chad. Is, um, is it bacterial or viral? Neither. Oh, neither. Is it a surprise or is it like goes in gradually? Um, it can. <laughs> well, it depends. It really depends. <laughs> I know that's that's a tough one to answer. It's not drowning. It's not malaria. It's not Lyme disease. Is it transmitted by insect? No. Is a four legged four legged animal involved? Like not at all. A cow or no. mm -mm. it's not an aneurysm. The, the so how many people you said? 3,500. The biggest demographic is people over the age of 65 and children under the age of five. Sleep apnea is a great That is a great guess, Skip. It's, it's not. Chad, it's a, it is it's genetic. The, it's, it's, it's genetic. Oh, it, it is. is it is genetic. Oh, okay. it is genetic. Okay. It's not Crohn's. Oh, um, oh, that's... Allison's getting closer. Okay. Allison said whooping cough, so she's close. Um, Is that the hiccups thing? No, not hiccups. Oh, that would be a good one. Um, not obesity, not, not thyroid. Emphysema? No, that's caused by outside. Chad. Chad got it. Is it asthma? It is asthma. Nice. 3,500. Yeah. yeah. So 30. That's 500. a relatively low number, huh? It is. So, and, and obviously uh, that's a 10 year average, but the average has continued to decrease over the years as uh, treatments and everything are, are getting better and better. I'm sure it's worse in other countries, um, but uh, the uh, in the US, only 3,500 people die from. Oh. From an asthma attack. Good on you, Chad. Well done, Chad. Yeah, that's a, a and it's good that it's a low number. 
because and like you said, a lot of there I'm sure there's a lot of other countries around the world where their numbers are are higher um because they may not have uh, as many treatment options available uh unfortunately but that's uh so right. asthma so did did they have the numbers for number of because i i know for a fact because two of our three kids suffered from asthma when they were younger they they outgrew because it's common that they'll have it yep, at yeah. a young age and then they'll they'll develop their way out of it um did they have a number for hospitalizations I'm sure they did. I just it's, didn't. It's got to it. be really high because I know we were we were at the hospital twice with one of our kids, and I think once with the other one. So, um, so yeah. next time, just give a reference on what is the what's what's the rank in terms of the leading cause of death. So you know, is it number one hundred and seventy-five leading oh. cause of death? Like so just to That's, put it into perspective, that would be interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's if good. that is, I like that idea a lot. And if and if that's easily attainable, that would be good. I know three of our four kids had asthma, and one wow. one outgrew it. Um, and the second one we'll see. Um, and yeah, the third one I guess we'll see as well. But uh, yeah, grew up with uh, nebulizers and oh, inhalers yeah. Yeah. And, and the whole whole shebang. Well, that was this week's. Numero de los muertos. All right, so let's move. I think this is the weirdest segment I've done in any cigar show. Yeah, it is. It My is respects fun. to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Way outside the box. The box is burned up in, in a pile of ashes on the floor. Yep. Yeah. Um, so let's move into this week's notable smokable. And uh, actually, I lied. Let's let's go into our lightning round. So Juan, last time you were on, we had we have sort of a set list of lightning round questions, but since you got the first ones, we we have some brand new ones that we're we're going to hit you with. So, if you could bring back any fashion trend from the past, what would it be? The ascot. Any fashion. Ah. I don't know, man. I just I, I love the idea of people dressing fancy. It doesn't matter what they wanted to do. My my great grandfather walking the streets just to buy a newspaper, being dressed all fancy. I don't know. I just love love the idea of people just thinking a lot about I'm gonna take care of myself just to walk down the street and buy the newspaper. Man, there's something I would that's 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 respect. I think it showed a lot of respect to everybody else who would be on the street. So I don't know what that trend would be called, but you know, when early 1900s would people go out with well dressed, yeah. that it's would be a popular answer. Good. Yeah, yeah, that oh, is yeah? A, that is a popular it answer. Is. People people want to go back to wearing wearing suits and ties and fedoras and and the whole mm -hmm. bit. And and I'm not I'm not against that. I I think it would be great. Not at all. Can we break real quick? Skip has a. Oh yeah, yeah. Skip's got a great question, actually, uh, which we we did not ask did you not. about, but uh, the factory extension. So, so is the is is the the Hoya de Nicaragua factory expanding? We sort of are. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Skip, for that. Uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, <laughs> not. I'm guessing it that does wasn't look public great. Yet. It looks beautiful, man. It looks beautiful. No, it's it's quite public, actually. It's, uh, it's okay. not, yeah. We are we are we are expanding some capacities there. That we were actually planning on it before the uh, the pandemic hit and the, all of this boom happened. But uh, I think most most everybody right now is expanding either for tobacco warehousing or for production. So yeah, it looks beautiful indeed, my friend. Nice. Very excited yeah. to see that. All right, so. When you were a kid or a teenager, was there a was there a particular uh, celebrity that you could say you had a big crush on? I had yeah, I had a crush on on Cindy Crawford. Was this the the the, the mm -hmm. supermodel? Yeah. That was my crush when I was growing up. And I, I had a male crush too, which was Michael Jordan. Man, that was our idol in our house. 
we were super fans and we wished like if if you had a dream that was that Michael Jordan appear at your place and that you yeah. would play ball with him or just hang out with him. That was sort of, that was a dream, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I never got to see Jordan play live, but I was very lucky that many years prior to, well, not many years prior to him being in the league, but um, I, I got to see the, the, the great teams of the, uh, uh, one of the great teams for the Boston Celtics play. So I got to see Larry Bird oh, and wow. Ke Kevin McHale and um, uh, uh, Bill, uh, Bill, Walton Bill Walton and, well, no, Walton was on the uh, uh, Lakers. But, she, yeah, l I'm not remembering right now, but uh, Larry Bird and Kevin McHale. And uh, so I was, I was very grateful to be able to see them play live when I was a kid. Well, I saw Jordan play – with the wizards and it just wasn't the same oh yeah, yeah. what were yeah. they the bull they were the bullets back then weren't they weren't they no the wizards the washington, yeah. wizards. Oh, washington okay. wizards okay i thought they were okay um all right so if if you could add any person's face to mount rushmore alongside all those people that are already carved up there who would it be and it can be anybody I'm I'm the wrong I'm the wrong guy to ask that question, man. I don't right. even know who the who the other faces are, to be honest. Oh well, well we got here's here's the good thing we have more questions, so we can we can definitely. I know uh, there's George Washington on the face. So I don't know George, the George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas, uh, George no, George Washington, Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt, and um, Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, Jefferson. Yeah. Can we add two? Yeah. I would add both Obama with his big smile and Trump with his frown, man. <laughs> his typical angry face. That would make a beautiful sight, man, when you had those two faces, one with that big smile and the other one with that, that you would get used to that. Isn't it true? That, that guy was angry as hell all the time, man. I, I, I'll tell you what, Juan. I'm never asking that question again because we're never going to get a better answer. Not that's a the best chance. That's the best. Yeah, that question's going off the list because we're never going to top that. That was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. Um, Even though I'm still the wrong question, the wrong guy to ask that question. No, that was that was fantastic. All right, so now we're going to move into into that's this. That's not coming week. out of your mind, man. That face of Trump in that big. I'm always Rock, it, I'm always going to see that now where every time I look at Mount Rushmore, I'm going to see Obama smiling on yeah. one side and I'm going to see Trump scowling on the other side. Every time I, I love it. Oh, I love it. So good. All right. Let's let's talk about this week's notable smokable. And as always, notable smokable is brought to you by Ace Prime, improving lives through fine cigars. Visit aceprime.com to learn more. So. Uh, Juan, we did this last time, and we're going to do it again tonight. Every time we talk about a cigar that we've smoked recently that was interesting to us, it could have been a cigar that's been on the market for decades and we're just trying again for the first time in a very long time, or it could be a cigar that's brand new that we just tried uh, for the first time ever. So did you have something recently that kind of fits that criteria? Um, yes. I think one that I had smoked a while ago, and at the beginning I was I was impressed, but then it fell off my radar. Then I got back again because I was going over my old stash, and it's the the Padron 19, 1926 in the natural shade. Mm. That was that is that is for me a memorable a memorable smoke. In my respect to the Padron family, even though they don't they don't need uh, any more. You know, um, but that that's a phenomenal smoke. Yeah, really great cigar. Fantastic. Cigar. Always, always. Uh, Garrett, what was yours this I week? I had a, um, a Four Kicks, the the classic. Oh, uh, one of the, the original. The, one of the original. Oh, nice. Four Kicks. Nice. Yeah, that's. Uh, it's it just, it, and it had been, it's one of the, you know, like you said, Juan, it, a cigar that for whatever reason you just don't pick up for a while. 
and I picked up uh, four kicks and was like, damn it, why don't I smoke more of these? Mm. You know, but there's a lot of cigars to smoke. Yeah. 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 So mine recently was the uh, the Dissident Home 2021. So so Ben Holt owns the brand now made through uh, Oveja Negra and he makes a different version of this blend every year. And um, uh, this year, I think, was just really, really good. Uh, it's a it's a very nice looking uh, sort of barber pole box press Toro, and I think this year was really, really well done. So it's a cigar that I've never, I've never had the, the the opportunity to smoke a dissident cigar. To be honest, mm. so oh, we'll have to change. That. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're sending never had the opportunity. Here. Don yeah. Carlos, <laughs> Don, Don Carlos, Carlos and Dissident. Dissident. Just write that down. Yep, we got that. We got, we got, got that. <laughs> All right. So uh, that was this week's notable smokable, brought to you by Ace Prime. Improving lives through fine cigars. Visit aceprime.com to learn more. So we want to give our viewers and listeners an idea of some really cool stuff we have coming up soon. So next week on Monday night, the sixteenth, we have Josh Haberski. We have Glenn Loop from the Premium Cigar Association. And joining us along with them is Jim Nash, who is a Minnesota State representative. He was a key player in helping reduce cigar taxes in Minnesota and succeeding. And we're going to talk about possibly some, some strategies. And these guys... Uh, Josh and Glenn and Jim are going to share some strategies that hopefully some other states in the United States can learn from to help with their state fight against unreasonable tobacco laws and taxes and things like that. So, um, and specifically, we're going to touch on some things about cigar bars, which there have been some bright spots for recently in the United States. Um, so that's next week. Um, then on August 30th, we have Bobby Newman from J.C. Newman Cigar Company. And into September, on September 13th, we have Nick Perdomo from Perdomo Cigars on the show. Very excited to have him on. So that is some stuff we have coming up. Uh, be sure to continue watching and listening and all that good stuff. And real quick, um, for that episode next week. You guys, if you have representatives in your states, it is a real good idea to write them, email them, tag them in a post um, to have them watch this, letting them know that this is important content for them to yes. watch and hear. Yes, that is a great idea. Um, and we normally don't publish the postings with the links for the shows until Friday until the Friday prior, but I think next week we'll do it earlier or later this week, we'll do it earlier so that people have more time to share the link out with their local state reps, with their local lawmakers so that they can hopefully be a part of it and, and uh, ask questions and, and hopefully learn a few things that they can do uh, for this. So um, really the final thing, we just want to say thanks again uh, to Juan Martinez from Hoya de Nicaragua for being on the show uh, we had, uh, again, a, a wonderful conversation with you. Thank you so much for, for spending your time with us this evening. And we cannot wait not only to have you back on the show, but we can't wait to be together again and, sh and share a cigar and, and, and stories and, uh, and just uh, be together again. Thank you very much, my friends. Uh, I hope that it's uh, light years away in a very positive way next time that we see each other uh, and that the next time that I'm in the show. Maybe 15 months from now, it's a different story that we're going to be talking on a positive note. So thank you very much to you guys for having me. It's, it's always a pleasure. And thanks, of course, to everybody that, that's watching and that watched uh, Allison uh, Skip for, for, for joining the show and uh, everybody else. It's always a pleasure. And uh, just as always, man, keep safe, keep healthy, and, uh, and uh, keep positive. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we had a great show tonight, and we appreciate all you guys watching and listening. Uh, just remember to follow the website, uh, sign up for the mailing list, 
Follow us on all social media at HBT Cigar. Find us on your, your favorite audio podcast platforms and make sure to subscribe to YouTube and like and follow on Facebook uh, so you don't miss anything that's coming out. And we really appreciate you guys. And as always, until we see you next time, burn cigars, not bridges. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. <laughs>